How much of a difference does the price of a golf ball make to the performance? That was the question we wanted to answer in this video because when it comes to golf balls, you can spend somewhere in the region of just under 50 pounds for a dozen, or you can spend a lot less than that. And if you do choose to go down the cheaper route, just what are you giving up in terms of performance? So to find out the other day, I went out and I bought two of the cheapest golf balls I could possibly find. I first went to Sports Direct and I bought the Slazenger V100 golf ball. This came in with a price of £6.50 per dozen. And then I went to a decathlon store and I bought an Inesis Distance 100 golf ball. And this one came in at a price of £4.99 per dozen. And the question is, just what are you giving up when you put a golf ball like one of these two in play versus a premium golf ball like the Strixon Z Star XV that I've got in my hands here. Now this is the 2019 version. This is a urethane covered golf ball that should offer really good distance, excellent spin and great feel. If you're new to the Golf Monthly channel, please do hit the subscribe button. If you like what you're watching, give it a like as well. But we're gonna firstly head over to the Foresight Sports headquarters in Guildford to give these golf balls a good test on the launch monitor. Then we're gonna come back to West Hill to find out how they play on the golf course. Let's give them a test. Okay, so launch monitor testing done. I'm now gonna test out the performance of these golf balls around the greens on the golf course. Uh, I've got a shot here of around about 40 yards. This is what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna start with the Strixon ball, then I'm gonna hit the other two. I'm gonna see what the differences are in terms of the feel and the spin control. Okay, so before I show you the results, time for a quick on-course live test. This is the fourth hole at uh, West Hill. It's about 165 yards from where I am here to that flag that's right at the back. And I'm gonna hit one shot with each golf ball uh, nearest the pin wins. So I'm gonna start with the in assist golf ball. Just to prove the doubt is wrong, that's the in assist. Then I'm gonna hit the Strixon, and then I'm gonna hit the Slazenger ball. Let's see how we get on. Oh, it's a good shot. Oh, a bit short. I'm not sure I've got quite enough club actually to get me right to the back of that green. Uh, Strixon next. There you go, Strixon. Tough to beat that first one. That was a good shot. Oh, it's just as good. Will it get back there? Yes, a little bit further up the green. I hit those similarly. So that was interesting. Okay, finally, Slazenger ball. There it is, Slazenger golf ball. They're two pretty good shots for me here, those two, not far off the right line. Come on, what have you got? Oh, fat pushed it. Oh, poor Slazenger. 
and it's, oh, well, there you go. I thought I fatted that, I think I did, but it's managed to make it almost pin high, I think. Let's go and take a look. So the first one is the inner cyst, and you'll notice that spun back a bit. I mean, it's the middle of winter here, you'd expect a rock to spin back, but still, not bad. Uh, closer to the flag is the Strixon, and then, Squeaking onto the right-hand side of the green, where are you, there you are, uh, is the Slazenger golf ball. Um, actually made it back there quite well. Okay, so testing complete. Let's take a look at the launch monitor data first. Um, now, the way in which we did the test, I hit a series of shots with each golf ball. So I started off with a 50-yard wedge shot, hit a few shots with each ball, then a seven iron, a few shots with each ball, and then a driver, a few shots with each ball to try and get some data that was comparable. And here is that data. I'm not going to run through all of it, but I am going to pull out some of the key findings. So I'm going to start with the 50-yard wedge shot and the Strixon. And uh, the key number to look at here is that spin number. So spinning at six, nine, four, five, that's really good spin on a 50-yard wedge shot. Uh, you'll also notice that the peak height's a little bit lower, so it launches a little bit lower and it doesn't fly quite so high. It doesn't fly quite so high precisely because the golf ball is grabbing on those grooves at impact and it's just bringing down, it's, so it's not hitting the club face and popping straight up into the air, it's grabbing and it's got a slightly uh, flatter ball flight with a little bit more spin on it. So how did the Inesis golf ball compare? Well, here are the numbers for the Inesis. Pleasantly surprised, I have to say. Uh, that spin number hasn't fallen off a cliff. It's at 6178, not too bad at all. Launching a little bit higher, as I said before, and the peak height was also a little bit higher. So still pretty good stopping power because you get that little bit more flight, but you don't get quite as much spin with the Inesis as you do with the Strixon, albeit there's only around about 800 RPM difference between the two golf balls. So not a huge amount, but probably enough to notice a difference, I would say. Um, and now let's take a look at the Slazenger. And this was funny because the first shot I hit with the Slazenger golf ball was the 50 yard wedge shot. And the first shot that I hit, hit the roof of the simulator. And that's because it wasn't spinning at all. So look at the spin number, 2322. Two, two. The spin rate has really fallen down by around about 4,000 RPM, which means that it was launching an awful lot higher, 43 degrees. That's nine degrees higher than with the Strixon. Um, and obviously the peak height was higher as well at 14 yards. Now, this performance isn't awful, but it does go to show you are giving up quite a lot of spin uh, with that Sl Slazenger golf ball around the green. Okay, so let's take a look at the seven iron results, starting with the Strixon. So ball speed, 122.5, launching at 20.7 degrees, uh, spinning at 5,362, peak height of 39, and a total carry distance of 175. The reason I've read all of those numbers out is because those would be sort of typical numbers that I would be expecting from a seven iron for me. But how did the other two golf balls compare? Well, starting with the inner assist. So the thing to notice here, so the launch angle is virtually the same between the two, but there's quite a lot less spin with the inner assist. Now that meant that I was achieving quite a bit more distance. So four extra yards of distance through the air with the inner assist on around about the same sort of ball flight. So more distance, but less I'd say less control going into the greens with the inner assist, but not a, a whopping amount in it. Uh, then let's take a look at the Slazenger. So the Slazenger was actually launching a little bit lower with the seven iron at 18.2 degrees and spinning a bit more at 64.55. The peak height was 34 and the total carry distance with the Slazenger was 168. So not as far as with the inner assist, 11 yards shorter than that inner assist golf ball and seven yards shorter than with the Strixon golf ball. So that leads me on to the driver. So the Strixon ball speed for me. Now I was using a tailor-made M6 head uh, with a hazardous smoke uh, X-Flex 70 gram shaft in it to give you a bit of context. So the Strixon ball speed of 164.5. The launch angle was 13 degrees, spinning at 2187. Uh, peak height of 37 yards and a total 
a carry distance of 290. So how did the Inesis compare? So uh, actually ball speed was down a bit with that Inesis golf ball, but the launch was up, sort of considerably up at 16.4. Spin was also down. And when you think about high launch, low spin like that, you're gonna get pretty good distance. So I got quite a lot of ball flight 41 yards peak height is fairly high for me and a total carry distance of exactly the same as with the Strixon golf ball. Now that is interesting. You'd think you'd be giving up something in terms of distance when you put a golf ball in play that is 40 pounds a dozen cheaper than something else. But it turns out that Inesis golf ball was carrying exactly the same distance as the Strixon golf ball. And then onto the Slazenger ball. Um, again, the ball speed slightly less at 156.6, but again, launching high, spinning low, good distance all round at 289. So not much actually to choose be from between these golf balls when it came to the driver. The uh, Strixon Z Star XV spinning a little bit more, which is what you'd expect. The Z Star version would spin a little bit less with the driver, so I might've got a bit more distance had I been using that version of the golf ball. Okay, so once I'd got all of my launch monitor data, I then came back here to West Hill and I hit a whole host of uh, chip shots and bunker shots and putts with all three of these golf balls. And really it was during this phase of the testing that the difference between them was most noticeable. Um, you just don't get that same level of spin control when you chip and when you hit bunker shots and the feel of the putter just isn't as good. So with a urethane covered golf ball like the Strixon Z-Star XV, you get a really silky soft feel through impact and you get that level of spin control when you chip and you hit bunker shots. That means you can really commit to your short game shots. You can deliver a little bit more club head speed into the ball um, knowing that you're not gonna lose control of the ball. That's not necessarily the case with these two distance golf balls. Now really, does that make a huge difference to your scoring potential out on the golf course, that extra level of control and feel around the greens? Guys, please do leave comments below. What do you think? Do you play a urethane covered golf ball? If so, do you think it helps you shoot lower scores? Because in my game, I use a urethane covered premium golf ball and I think it does offer enough performance, particularly around the greens, to help me play better golf but I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Do you think it helps you? Because if the answer to that question is no, then you know there are cheaper options out there for you. And the two that I've tested, I have to say, I was pretty impressed by the performance. Um, the, the golf ball stayed intact, they're pretty durable. I didn't hit any shots that I thought, well, that's gone straight right, and that's down to the golf ball. They flew pretty straight and true, as I would expect the golf ball to fly. So really, as I said, the difference between them was in the short game. And if I had to pick one or other of these two cheaper golf balls to go for, it would be the cheapest. So this Inesis Distance 100 golf ball that I bought for just £4.99 is a really solid performer. The launch monitor data showed it. So it showed how you, the, there wasn't a huge gulf in performance between this Inesis golf ball and the Strixon golf ball in any area of the bag. And then when I was hitting chips and putts, yes, you don't get that same level of feel, but it's not too bad. So if I was gonna pick a distance golf ball, a really cheap golf ball to use, it would be this Inesis golf ball. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Please do leave comments below. What do you think? What are your thoughts on the matter? We'd be really interested to hear. Please do hit the like button if you've liked the video. But for now, from West Hill, it's goodbye.